The next step is using small, light, autonomous machines. So, robots, small robots that do the same work, but then not, not a man on it. You need a farmer for the decisions, but you, for, the, for the most of the labor, you don't need a farmer anymore. And then you, can, you don't need, again, this big, very big machine. One example of what's already available is that we have uh, this um, small machine for spraying. Actually, there are two big solar panels. It's a very light machine. It recognizes a weed and it puts a little drop of pesticide on a weed. And it makes uh, a difference of, let's say, 95 reduction in herbicide use. So if you can reduce that herbicide use with 95%, then maybe herbicides are not such a problem anymore because you use so little. So, but also for diseases spraying, now we spray everything the same. While only that plant and that plant and that plant is ill. But we do everything. We're using a cannon to kill a mosquito. If we are able to recognize the first spot of the disease, or the, we can find the pests, or we can find the weed, we can you do it very precisely. And it means that we can at least reduce pesticide use 20 fold. The way we're doing, producing now our food, is not very future proof. We're doing agriculture in big monocultures. Uh, 5, 10, 20, 100 hectares of exactly the same everywhere. And it's the same as COVID-19. If you put a lot of genetically exactly the same individuals close together, then a pest and disease spreads very quickly. The main points in the agroecological approach are that we have a focus on soil management and we have a focus on crop diversity. Crop diversity in time, like rotation, but also crop diversity in space and that is mixed cropping, strip cropping or whatever.